Thank you. Today, we'd like to talk to, about the, the benefits of proper barn lighting. Uh, my name is Richard Hill. I've been in the lighting industry since 2014. I was a sales manager for an agricultural division of a lighting manufacturer in Wisconsin, where I did receive training from a professor at the University of Wisconsin for the effects of lighting on a dairy farm. Next, I did oversee an agricultural division uh, for an energy company from Texas. And today, the dairy industry is challenged with pressures to lower the carbon footprint. And with that, uh, effective lighting on a barn uh, can help you not only lower the carbon footprint on your barn, but also improve the quality of the food you do provide. Before we start, I like to look at some of the basic lighting terms that, you know, just in case someone doesn't know, but the term foot candle. Foot candle came from uh, basically a candle in one square foot or a one lumen. Um, that foot candle in the case of uh, Lux is one lumen per square meter. Uh, the differences between a ballast and a fluorescent, a ballast provides electrical sparks to each end of the fluorescent bulb. And what that does is ignite the gases in that bulb. Um, an LED or driver uh, is the ballast, so to speak, and the LED, the light emitting diodes, um, but you have a constant drive of power of either 12 volt, 24 volt, 32 volt, depending on the fixture itself. In the case of uh, the rating of the light, you have an IP67, which is waterproof, IP65, which is dust, dust proof and low pressure wash. Um, these are two of the main ones you wanna look at when providing light for a farm. Next is the color spectrum. You know, you have 3000, 4000, 5000. Uh, 5000 is the best one for animals. And another important thing that we're gonna talk about today is the lumens per watt. This actually tells you your efficiency of your product that you're, that you're purchasing. Some of the facts about lighting, uh, for all of us in the United States, that's only that's where I'm from, so we have to look at the reports that I have access to. Uh, but some of the report, the energy reports that 75% less electricity is used with LEDs. Um, on a typical farm, 20% is for the, the lighting of the farm. So it's, it's a great deal. It's part of your electric bill. Uh, LED fixtures convert 95% of the energy used into light um, and only 5% heat. A lot of your other fixtures are just the opposite. A lot of heat comes off uh, some of the other types of finish it, fixtures. LEDs do not contain harmful chemicals uh, such as mercury. So, you know, when you dispose of a mercury or excuse me, a fluorescent tube, there's a lot of mercury inside of that. I like to look at typically why we work with lighting and how to replace them. Um, let's look at some examples for existing lights. Here we, you know, very old conventional type products um, and switching them to LEDs can really save you some, some money. I took in this barn that you just saw, there was 250 fixtures. Um, they do draw 285 watts. Uh, however, it was a 250 watt bulb, but there is a 35 watt ballast in each one of those fixtures that draw that energy. And as you know, when we do the math, um, you can see that it, it will consume about $29,000 per year. With our particular product, um, and the, and what we'll talk about further is the lumens per watt. In this case, this particular product has 120 watts and it produces about the same lumens that we learned earlier. Um, it is a, a great deal uh, change here, as you can see, in the energy cost. You know, the savings uh, on this is about 16,000 per year and over a five year period, nearly $70,000. The symbol that you see on here is DLC listed premium. Uh, you'll see that a lot today. And with that, what the DLC is Designer Lights Consortium. It's an independent testing firm. 
that basically gives uh, a rating of the fixture to say it's going to do what it's going to do. And uh, when it's premium, that means it's maxing out. So if you have a 125, 120 watt fixture producing the lumens that it does, it uh, would be considered a premium fixture. Of course, everybody knows uh, there's online and you know some of your customers or if you're a farm owner, think, well, I can look on Amazon and, and get the light cheaper. And today I'd like to show you a little bit of a difference of why, you know, how this does affect in your overall project cost. So again, we looked at the same farm. Um, we looked at the online LEDs, 250 fixtures. Um, the lumens per watt in this case is 135. And what that means, it, it um, uses 150 watts to get about 20,000 lumens. So in this case here, we did the math and we came up with a much, uh, yes, we did save some money of, as compared to those older conventional lights. Um, we're down to $15,000 per year. But here's where it really becomes interesting. Our fixture is 179 lumens per watt. So with that, we have, <laughs> it is more expensive when you purchase it. But number a couple things here. Um, the online fixtures generally are not premium or not even listed at all for DLC. So the rebates will be affected from your utility company. But in this case here, we also see a great big difference in overall energy cost per year with having a more efficient, more high, higher lumens per watt. We it's only three thousand dollars a year, but over a five year period. It's fifteen thousand dollars, or if you break it down one step further, you see that it's sixty sixty one dollars per fixture. So that fixture on Amazon might be you know thirty dollars cheaper uh, for you, but look at the really of the savings. I did it on five years. Um, you can once you start going out further, the savings will be even more drastic. The lighting types, you know, there's low bays, there's high bays, there's specialty lighting, and there's polycarbonate siding. You know, basically on these types of fixtures, we we look at, I we like to look at the design of the fixture because of the harsh environment on a dairy farm. Um, you know, typically a, a low bay light is going to be a um, fiberglass housing all the way around. Um, you know, it's a vapor tight, they call them. Um, the products of the high bay, uh, typically it's the UFO style that you see, will have uh, heat sinking ring, rings on it and the specialty lights and the polycarbonate siding. What we've done with our product line, and when you look at lights, when you purchase them for your farm or for your dealership, um, there is several different types or designs of lights. For example, our, our high bay has uh, the, the top of it doesn't have the ability for the birds to make a nest on it with the rings. It's typically on a UFO style. The low bay light has aluminum housing um, that releases the heat. Poly bodies uh, hold the heat and, and also in turn, when they hold the heat, they're gonna affect the longevity of the product. So a low bay here, we see it's typically in a, you know, a setting of uh, anything under 14 feet. Um, here's a cap barn that we have with a low bay light in it. Where, where are we gonna use them? You know, typically they're gonna be used in breezeways, office rooms, break rooms, bathrooms, subways and parlors. And as we just, uh, just showed you, a calf barn. How's it going to impact the animal well-being? Well, proper equipment care, um, proper care in the calf barn, and proper care in the milking parlor. And what would you, what would a farmer want from them? Well, basically, staff safety to the staff. You got to meet the guidelines of the USDA and also meet the processor guidelines. 
and increase the ROI through animal health. You know, in that calf barn, if you can see it to clean it properly, make sure the, you know, you don't see any illness on the calf. It really makes a difference in its health. High bays. High bays are a product that you can use, you know, anything over 14 feet is the general breaking area. Um, here we have them in, you know, two different types of uh, high bays and two different types of farms. Where they can be used. Again, areas above 14 feet, housing areas, milking parlors, holding areas, breezeways, uh, shop buildings. So, you know, there's, we're going to go in depth a little bit more about the first line here long day photometric period. Uh, proper milking process, cleaning your aqua dumps, your water troughs. Uh, safe staff can expect the animals to make sure they're not lame or sick. Same, you know, same conclusion here. Uh, proper milk prep, proper milking equipment, you know, meeting USDA guidelines, improve animal health, improve staff safety, and proper equipment and care in the, in the shop. This is a specialty light. Um, we use this, as you can see, it's on the water ring of a rotary, or uh, it's in the butt pan of a parallel parlor. This I feel is the most important light in the barn. Um, it, it really is uh, very beneficial in proper animal care. Um, I did have a farm in upstate New York, the first project that I've sold with this years ago that put the product in, they were always in the 160s somatic cell count. They could never get down below that threshold. After a couple of weeks of having the light in so they could clean it proper, you know, do a proper job of prep, um, proper job of milking and a proper job of post prep. You know, they, they dropped their somatic cell count to in the 130s. So it was very financially beneficial for them, but also improved the quality of the milk that we talked about in the beginning. And this is really a unique product. It's, it, as you can see, it's mainly used on parallel parlors, rotary parlors, um, or food processing area. It is, it does have an NSF rating. The main goal here is true, uh, clean, 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 you know, to lower the somatic cell count, to really inspect, inspect the utter health and for the staff members to really see what they're doing and improve your ROI with somatic cell count is definitely the main goal here. Uh, also, if you're, you know, if you have to, if you, if you do have uh, sick cows, um, you can help hopefully improve time management by not having such a larger group of sick cows. Parley carbonate siding. Uh, let's let's utilize the natural light in a barn. Um, it definitely helps in electrical cost and lowering your carbon footprint. With the same as you got the light coming in, but you can control the your ventilation. Like to look at some of the areas where we use them: uh, side walls in the housing, you know, holding pen, breezeways, and also as we saw in that one picture. Uh, calf barn. In the calf barn, it's it's nice because with the low angle of the sun in the winter time, it lets the sun, the heat of the sun in, so you can offer some some heat to the calves. Uh, natural light for a long day photometric period suppresses the melatonin, and like I said, um, provides some warmth for the calves in the low sun angle. Reduce electrical costs. Uh, control the air movement, as we just talked about. So that's, you know, the real big reasons for that type of product. Um, the overall benefits of lighting, you know, if you start breaking down the different sectors that how lighting can benefit your farm, you're definitely looking at the cow health, you know, help helps prevent contaminated milk by fecal coliform. And where is that? You can control that is when the staff is in your housing areas, they can clean the walkways, they can see that they're really doing a great job cleaning all areas of the barn, not just with uh, 
you know, this, this alley scrapers. Lower the somatic cell count, increase the feeding intake for cows converting into milk. You know, heifers uh, with their growth factor increase and detection of injuries and lameness. So lighting is really a very important, you know, part of the cow health on your farm. I'd like to talk a little bit about a long day photometric period. Now, one thing I do want to say that this is just a, a, a brief explanation of the long day photometric period. We do have a, a person on staff with our company that's a veterinarian, or you can contact your own veterinarian, but we can help you with if you really want to learn more about it, the scientific process of this. But basically, light is transmitted by an optic nerve to the penal gland at the base of the brain. The penal gland is a source of melatonin, you know, that makes bears hibernate in the winter. Um, this is uh, truly one of the reasons why we do what we do with lighting. Uh, plasma melatonin naturally increases at dusk to make the cows go to sleep. So what we want to do is simulate, um, you know, 16 hours of light to uh, really stop the melatonin and begins to uh, suppress it. You know. It's really important, as you can see in the pictures here, um, where the lighting design and the type of fixture you're using. You know, our goal is to increase growth hormones and other hormones really to make this cow, you know, be healthier, uh, increase the dry matter intake, which increases the milk production. But also when you do a proper light design, um, having the correct fixture, um, it really does help the cow with less stress. Cows don't like shadows. Um, as you can see in this picture, there's definitely no shadows. Uh, the light that we have in this picture has a prismatic lens on it that aids in the non-glaring of the, of the light of the array. And with its unique design, it really spreads the light perfect and it's ideal for long date uh, photometric period. So another, portion of the long day photometric period is the short day. So we basically want to have six to eight hours of rest. Um, we need to do that by changing the lights on a schedule um, of 16 hours of the of the long day of the bright lights and then five or excuse me eight hours of below five foot candles. This is basically as you can see this is a picture of a, the moon. And that's about what light you'll have with five foot candles. Um, we don't wanna use long day photometric period on dry cows because you want them to also rest. Uh, they're, they're active enough with their hormones at that point that we don't wanna increase or change that. Five foot candles also is adequate light enough for employees to, to safely negotiate and perform tasks. Um, there was a lot of research done about using a red light and that's fine. Uh, there is products out there that um, do create a red light for in the short day period. The, from my experience, and I've worked with a lot of different products, there, I did have a lot of complaints with a red light because you can't see the ear tags. It's, it's unfortunately, it's sometimes it's uh, kind of, you can't see it all. I know when, uh, Myself, when I went to college, we had black lights and you, you can't, it's the same if you want to think of it that that's, you know, if you've ever been in a room with a black light, it's, it's hard to see anything. And that's what you're doing with that type of light. So the really the guidelines that we want to do is, is design, you know, every square foot, as you can see this, this is a photometric drawing that we did. And the balance of light um, is really important. To, to have the, the light in the feed alleys, uh, in the beds, to have it throughout the barn on the same level. And uh, you wanna, when you do this, you wanna have your foot candle reading at two feet above the floor. You wanna take in consideration of the dust and you know whether you have baffles and all this. It's, it's really, we recommend having it done by a professional when you do your layout. Um, then with the periods of, eight hours, uh, then again, you have 
you know, less than five feet. So short day levels, also for dry cows, you want 16 hours of at low light levels instead of, you know, 16 hours of high light. Um, this, as you can see, this is a photometric drawing where we used our, our high-end fixture that we do have. But uh, what you'll see with inexpensive or Amazon lights or something of that nature, you'll see hot spots where right underneath the light You'll see 20 or excuse me, 50 foot candles, but 15 feet away, 20 feet away, you'll see 15 foot candles. And that causes shadows. It also causes inaccurate uh, foot candle average readings for your barn. It might show that you have 20, you know, two foot candles for your barn, but really you don't. <laughs> the benefits of lighting in other areas, staff safety. Um, I've been on a lot of projects over the years where we do something like, you know, put the lighting in this case, the high, our hygiene array in the, in the parlor and the staff uh, improves the worker morale a lot. I mean, we've, I've done rotaries where they, uh, you know, they're just really happy to go to work a lot. As you know, a lot of time staff, we do pay them bonuses if they hit certain quotas um, and they, they can see the do their job better and to meet those uh, quotas. You know, regulations, another key area. Um, you know, the, the FDA and milk processors have regulations for lighting levels when they come and inspect your farm. You know, and, and so when we do uh, our photometric layouts or advise customers to use what type of lights, we try to meet these guidelines that you see down through here. You know handling toxic materials. I mean, it says 10 foot candles. I always go to 30 to 40 uh, foot candles in drawings. It's the state, your staff, staff safety is really key. And as we talked about earlier, you know, the benefits of, the benefits of lighting and the financial and the ROI, that's, you know, sustainability is a real important focus that every farm should be facing. But sustainability also has to be profitable. So, you know, but by using LED lights, you can lower the, you know, your carbon footprint, but also, you know, do all, you get a lower utility bill, improve your camera images in the parlor. I mean, there's less downtime. It's, it's really, if the staff is, you know, not falling off a, a curb because they couldn't see. And, you know, it's, it's really a, a complete picture of, of having your barn lit correctly. And as we talked before about the DLC, um, you know, it really helps really improve your ROI if your local utility has it. Uh, one thing about DLC listed premium products, they have to have a five years manufacturer warranty. And it's really benefits uh, your utility company to ensure that the light you did purchase, you know, is meeting the guidelines that it says it does. It can't say 179 lumens per watt and only be at 135 and be DLC premium listed. Let's look at, you know, why efficient lighting matters. As we learned in our first slide, a couple slides there, it's, it's to reduce electrical costs. You're meeting your government guidelines, uh, safety for the staff members. You're definitely can improve your mature cows in long day lighting and also young stock. Um, I've done a lot of lawn day lighting uh, levels in uh, calf barns, and it really does help a, a young animal um, grow. You know, you can improve the conception rate with lawn day lighting, reduce uh, animal stress. Some farms use lawn day level light, you know, 22 to 25 foot candles, but they leave the lights on 24 seven. And that's the worst thing that you can do. Uh, if you can imagine having the lights on in your bedroom all night, you know, you just don't get a restful sleep and that stress does increase. And they found that, you know, when you have uh 24 seven lighting actually has affected the somatic cell count um, of a, of a cow. And with our company, our goal is to really give you a complete optimal, ultimate animal centered environment. You know, we want to look at the, the comfort in the cow with the stalls, the lighting, 
as you just learned about the ventilation, uh, cow cooling, calf care, and with Dairy Boss as an overall, um, you know, on the cloud uh, service to really control all these these factors. So it's we like to look at it a little bit different than most of using a, all the products in your barn to help the the front of the barn perform the best in the milking parlor. Is there any questions I could help you with? Thank you so much, Richard. We do have some questions. Um, so you mentioned earlier about the use of red lights in a barn. Um, what about the brightness of the light? Because um, I know that some lights are able to be dimmed. What are your recommendations there? Yes, we you always want to purchase a light that has the ability to be dim. Um, it, it can be done Wi-Fi. Uh, I don't recommend that because of all the interference you have in a barn with Wi-Fi. I like to, to be able to use a low voltage uh, wires and dim it. The, that's how you would use that same wiring for the red light. It would change the, the different uh, lens, uh, the different driver, I should say, in that light. But you definitely want to have the ability to have a, you know, a low voltage wiring so you can dim the, fi the fixture. Are there any ROI calculators available for a lighting installation? Lighting installation? Yes. Um, just sort of like what I did in the beginning, if, if that's what they mean, uh, the type of light that you choose. Uh, if, if they wanna follow up with an email to us, we can definitely you know, get that, how to successfully do that method but uh there there's you can take into consideration of the labor yes there's definitely a lot of uh tools that you can do to really calculate um right right down to the wire the whole nine yards i mean it's 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 there's definitely a lot of uh products or, or uh, excel spreadsheets and things that we can get to you to help that perfect how does someone go about investigating the government rebates? Uh, it's not the government. And I, well, I shouldn't say that. I don't know what country that's coming from, but um, what I usually do that I've all the time is just ask the, the customer what utility they have and simply go, you know, to your utilities representative. Um, in our, in the United States, there's no government rebates per se. There's some, there's some states that do have them from time to time, but it's more of the utility uh, driven rebates. Um, like in Vermont, for example, in the United States, there's uh, more reg there's more rebates typically because they the type of power that they uh, that they manufacture, there's not a lot of uh, ability to to increase that. So they have to reduce the grid by using LED lights. Um, you know, in place like Idaho, you might not have as great of a rebates because you have hydropower. So it's really gonna fluctuate by state or by utility. So that's the easiest way is either to contact your utility or just get online and see what they have for rebates. From your experiences, what differences have you seen in cow behavior after changing the lights? Uh, this, when I first started, with a, in 2014, we did a tie stall barn with long day lighting. And having the proper light levels uh, in this tie stall barn, um, the, the farmer installed the lights themselves. So they did like a section each day. And you could really see in that barn how the cows that had the proper light, they, they ate, the, the, the manger was clean of food. And with the cows that didn't have have it done yet um actually the farmer called me and made me come down and look the, the cows that didn't have it done yet were uh had not eaten all the food in the manger so that was to me a, a true success story that was just perfectly demonstrated by using light quite often with shadows you will see uh you know as i mentioned with shadows of inexpensive lights or hot spots you'll see the cows uh, jerky you'll see them nervous 
with with lighting like the one picture we had there that's perfectly balanced they're just quiet um there's there's no stress they just go about their day and man when you turn those lights off at night dim them down they do uh they do rest uh you know lay down and make more milk so it's it is really crucial uh having the correct light and and having it installed correctly Is there a certain type of lighting strategy that you can implement um, for those that farm with in a pasture system? No, um, you know, the sunlight is the, the best light. Um, you know, it's I've uh, worked with some farms um, in, I, you know, in feedlot settings. And uh, the, the thing with that, with, you know, uh, exterior uh, light levels, uh, you cannot get them bright enough. You know, it looks like, you know, um, a pole light or exterior light would be very bright, but most of them are in that five to eight foot candles. So it's uh, these, there's some large, uh, in the Midwest, some some large calf raising facilities that are outside. And it's it's very difficult to, to do anything with long day lighting um, in that setting to try to extend that that to get that 16 hour period because there's just not enough light to do that with an exterior fixture. I'm not seeing any other questions. So I think we're good to go ahead and wrap up. But before we do, Richard, can you go to the next slide, please? Um, we just want to invite everyone to join us on September 11th at 5 p.m. Um, for our next webinar, it'll be with Henry Collins, who's our territory manager for the Asia Pacific Territory, and he's going to be talking about, um, so you're thinking of building a barn, and he will be comparing um, different types of barn um, housing structures. So we hope you are able to join us, and thank you again, Richard, so much for sharing your knowledge with us. And with that, we hope everyone has a great rest of their day.